Welcome everyone to Hello Ernest at the Kitchen Table, connecting writers and readers. I am Jan Pratt, the author of several children's picture books and also the author of a series of yoga lesson plans for kids. And I am Gaga Gabardi. I'm a co-author with Judy Lee Butler. Together, we write the Phoebe Cornell Mystery Series. Join us for every episode as we connect readers to your next great read. Hello, Pam Torrens. Great to see you. Thank you for agreeing to come to the kitchen table and let's talk about you as a writer. Are you good with that? I'm good with that, Jean. I sure appreciate the invite. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. And uh, for our listeners, I'd like to ask you a, a question about getting started. What what inspired you to get started in writing? Well, reading is what inspired me to get into writing. I, I grew up uh, in libraries. Uh, my mother and father were both big readers, and I just grew up reading books and books and books. And when I went off and joined the military, I spent 30 years in the Air Force. That didn't change. I was uh, reading, you know, between 50 and 100 books every year my whole life. And uh, after I retired, uh, of course, I kept reading, but I thought to myself, you know, I've got this time. I've always been interested in writing. Uh, what if I tried to try to give readers something that I've enjoyed so much? You know, I've got my favorite authors and I wanted to give it a shot and see if uh, see if I could put something out that uh, the readers would be respond to. So okay. reading got me into it. All right. That's great. And uh, isn't it interesting how the more we read, we pick up what other people are doing and we can we can use use it. We can style it. And uh, was that good or did it not be good? <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a great point. I You know, I always read growing up as a reader and not as a writer because I wasn't one. And right. it was uh, like you point out, it was extremely interesting. Once I started trying to write myself, and all of a sudden read with a different eye and see what the author was was doing, rather than just lose myself in the story, which is what I tend to do. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I I enjoy the story as well. And so all this reading, you decide to share your experience, and then what happened? How'd you get to the point? You have two books out now, or is it three? I have two out and one coming out at the end of August. All right. Uh, and so how did you get to the point of writing, uh, especially that first book? Was there a trigger or anything? Well, I had always heard that writers ought to write what they know. And uh, in my retirement, I thought, well, really... All I know is my military career, and I, I just really wasn't that interested in writing a military thriller. And I'll tell you that my favorite books are mystery, suspense, and thrillers. And so I knew that's what I wanted to write because that's what I enjoy so much. But uh, there's a lot of people writing military thrillers, and I just I just wasn't up for it. And the only other thing I really knew was that you know when I moved here, to the valley in 2019 i joined search and rescue and so i'd been on it for a couple of years when i started writing and so i started looking at some of these missions i was going on and saying well what would have happened if it wouldn't have turned out the way it did what if something sinister happened <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was the genesis of uh of my books they they are not search and rescue books uh, per se, but they always have a search and rescue B story going through them. My main character is a member of search and rescue out in the Arkansas River Valley, uh, just like me. That's that's where the similarities end. But uh, that's that's why I just started writing what I'm writing. So that leads me to the question: Is your main character Cam Torrens? No, he's got hair. So. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, there's a difference, exactly. But I, uh, as a reader, I often wonder, is is this Cam's uh, thinking and doing and experience? 
it's there there are parts of me in there so Tyler's on my main character when he comes out to the mountains uh he's a military contractor in Florida kind of uh numb from a divorce and some family issues and when he comes out he's looking for a fresh start and he's trying to figure out how he could serve again kind of like he did in the military uh, where to do that and how he could do that how he could be useful and I felt that when I moved out here I I uh, wondered how I would fit in um I wasn't looking for you know paid employment and uh, and so I was looking for ways I could volunteer I started off on uh, my homeowners association board which is a wonderful homeowners association but I will never be a HOA board member again <laughs> very smart from what I hear Cam very so, smart <laughs> uh, so yeah. that that wasn't it uh, but the more I got into the search and rescue you know it was my niche I don't I don't have a lot of the skills that uh, other search and rescue members have as far as high angle rock climbing uh, or river Ooh. rafting type stuff. Uh, you know, I can get by on an ATV or, and I'm learning to do a snowmobile, but my my biggest skill is uh, hiking and I'm useful because I can carry a lot of stuff on my back for a long distance. That That's about what I bring to the table. And that's what, that's what Tyler Zahn does except he keeps running into weird stuff and he's good <laughs> friends with the deputy sheriff here in Chafee County. And uh, they end up getting involved in figuring out the weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I love your stories. I love your stories. Thank you. But as I read, I keep seeing Tyler. Oh, maybe I should substitute the word Tyler for Cam. <laughs> it sounds very exciting. So uh, it's been a lot of a lot of fun to write them. I actually have a prequel coming out in February of 2025 uh, that oh. will that will tell how Zong got to where he got because book one stable, uh, which came out last summer, you know, right. has him already in search and rescue, already on a mission, and strange stuff happening. And so the backstory shows up next February 2025. Exactly. Oh, good to know. I'll be watching for that. And I do follow you, so I'm sure I'll see all the announcements coming up. I just saw the one recently on uh, the next book in August. So I, I'm tuned in and ready for that one to be released. So thank you very much. Keep me keep me going. Um, you know, you mentioned um, that you've always been a big reader. And like so many of us, we pick up d different things. What what are your um, what kind of authors are you reading that you prefer in suspense and thrillers? Well, I've got uh, almost two different genres within that category. The the first one and the ones I think that have had the most influence on my writing are C.J. Box and Craig Johnson. So oh yeah, both based out of Wyoming, which I know. Uh, your co-author, Judy Lee Butler, she, for your books, she lives up there really close to Craig Johnson's neck of the woods. Exactly, and, in uh, Buffalo. Right, right. And so uh, I love uh, C.J. Box, and he's got a game warden, Joe Pickett, up in Wyoming, uh, that he writes, just writes a great story. That's had a lot of influence on me. I've read all of his books. I think I just finished number 24 uh, last month. Right. And, uh, and he writes uh, in third person and past tense. And that's what I wrote my first book in. Uh, I think I'd been listening to a lot of Craig Johnson, but or I mean, uh, CJ Box, but yeah. Craig Johnson, you know, he's the author of the books that the Longmire series is based off of. And Where Walt we all Longmire, want to go. Right. And uh, he uh, he writes in uh, first person. And uh, which is a completely different voice than CJ Box. And I like that too. And so my second book in the series, you know, I broke the rules by switching points of view. I went from third person in the first book to first person in the second book. And I've been uh -huh. writing, <laughs> right. Shame, I've been shame writing on first you, person Cam. ever since. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. I love uh, writing these books, you know, but I figured uh, it was probably worth it for me to take the risk because I wasn't rocketing towards the New York Times bestseller. So <laughs> I'll just start off 
figure it out my way and then uh, all right and then good. settle into it as i go so good, those good. two those two authors had a big influence on my writing now the other genre that uh is the ones i just enjoy reading so much but i i also think they factor into my books are psychological suspense and so mm -hmm. authors like uh mary kubica um uh, Janelle Brown, uh, Lisa Jewell, Ruth Ware. I'm a big fan of yeah. uh, these authors. And uh, as a matter of fact, I just finished uh, Ruth Ware's latest book last week. And uh, I just, I can't stop reading those. And my second book, Fall Summit, has a lot of uh, psychological suspense mixed in with the action in that book. So big influence on me. All right. And then what about the prequel that you're working on for next year? Is that going to be first person again or not? Uh, that's that's a great question. So the prequel is actually the very first book I wrote with Tyler Zahn. And at that time, the main character had a different name and I was just learning how to write. And I pitched that book thinking I had the world's next big bestseller and got handed back to me about, oh, I don't know, 75 different rejections. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm thinking, how can these guys miss this great opportunity? But, uh, uh, you know, I just rolled on to the next book and the next book after that. It wasn't actually until the third book that I got picked up by this uh, small uh, indie press publisher I'm with now, Black Rose Writing. Uh, and so I went back and I took a look at that very first book and after you know three books later when i go back and look at it i'm like oh no wonder they didn't publish that book i see uh, now see? <laughs> <laughs> and so i took that book apart and uh rewrote it from scratch and uh um, wow and i just just got it back from my editor what i thought was a finished product got it back from the editor april 1st with some serious uh, rewriting suggestions that I'm in the middle of right now. I just finished an hour and a half of that before I got on this podcast with you. But it's to answer your question, it I changed it to first person for Zahn, okay. and I've got third person for a couple of other characters. Okay. All right. Great. Well, um, when your editor got back to you, that was April 1st. That was April Fool's Day. Maybe, maybe your editor <laughs> wasn't really serious. Did you ever think about that? <laughs> She turned it around. She turned it around on me, and she she's April Fool's Day. She said, "You think that book's ready to go?" So, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I like your editor already. And who is your publisher? You mentioned it. I didn't quite catch it all. Uh, Black Rose Writing. They're a mm -hmm. uh, uh, indie publisher out of Castroville, Texas, and they have a stable of about four hundred and fifty authors. They put out uh, four books a week um publish four books a week and so they're big for a small publisher uh but they're not uh you know the big five um, yeah yeah but that still that is big so four books a week i can't imagine they're it, they're probably booked out the rest of this year and into next year if you're already booking for 2025 so Good, good. I'm glad you found a decent publisher. Sounds fine. Well, you know, you mentioned that you had to rewrite uh, some of the things uh, that came from the April Fool's, or I'm sorry, April 1st uh, uh, <laughs> feedback from your editor. But uh, the question is, what are your writing habits? You know, if you've just finished some this morning, do you write like every day? What are your habits? So uh, that's an important part of my my life, in fact, not just for writing, but for everything else. Um, you know, I, I'm a big guy on routine, which is tough because my my wife is a gal who likes to travel and and be spontaneous. And so, you know, there's always a friendly dynamic with their well, me wanting to do my things and and her wanting us to go out and just do things, you know, but I do. I uh you know, I, I exercise in the morning as part of my routine. I do some reading in the morning. That's part of my routine. And writing is a part of my routine every day. So the writing that I do varies on where I'm at on the book. I tend to uh, have a goal of writing a thousand words a day when I'm writing my 
first draft. Oh, and wow. I, I, I say that at the end of uh, four months, you know, I'll have about a 90 to 100,000 word first draft. And, you know, if you do the math, that adds up more than the 90 or 100. But within that four months, there's going to be 20 days where I can't get that thousand words done. So I got a little... <laughs> I got a little slop built in there for, uh, you know, time with family and the kids and ex uh, extraneous stuff that happens. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. Uh, when I finished with that four months, um, I let it sit for a couple of weeks and then I, I go back in and I'll I'll rewrite it uh, from the very beginning. I'll just go through and I'll rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. And I can usually do more than a thousand words a day with that. And so that takes about half the time as the first draft did but but it also puts me at like six or seven months and then i'll send it out to a couple of beta readers to get their thoughts on it and when i have that in i'll send it off to the uh, editor uh and do that and then another two three months after that so it takes about a year for yes. me to get a book that i think is ready to go well, it sounds like you're planning ahead. If you've already got August booked and then uh, the prequel for 2025, so you're doing it right. I, how do you stay motivated? You know, that is really a lot of work. Um, a thousand words at a sitting and the goal for every four months. How, how do you uh, stay motivated for all of that? I don't. That's why the habit and the routine is so important. So. <laughs> A lot of times I am, and I love it when I am motivated and, and maybe I want to write more than a thousand or I've got great ideas or I know exactly what I want to write next. But sometimes I sit down and i so frustrated. I put off a thousand words because I'm not exactly sure, you know, what I want to write. Um, and so the fact that I have a box on my to-do list that I have to check off, that's what makes me do it. It's the same thing, uh, you know, counting's important for me. And so... Uh, you know, I run every day. This morning I ran day 901 of running over a mile a day. And wow. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not motivated even half the times to go out and run, but I'm on a running streak, so I have to do it. And so, I don't know, I think it's important, which you brought up first, hab habits are more important than motivation in my mind, for me. Okay. That's how, yeah. how it works. Well, if that works for you, that's the main thing. And that's what we're trying to get to on uh, all of these interviews is as an author, how, how do you harness that creativity with yet the discipline? Creativity for a lot of people is kind of out there and you wander here and right there and dream it up. But then you need that routine that, that you've got going. So uh, harnessing the two together really is uh, a challenge. Well, I'll just, you know, while you were saying that, it reminded me that um, I would hate for anybody to think that when I'm in the thousand words a day phase for four months, that there's a heck of a lot of creativity going on. For me, the stuff that comes out a thousand words a day is not very good. It's just that uh, when I'm done with that four months, the next two or three months of rewriting it, that's where the creativity comes in. It's so much, for me, so much easier to take something okay. that's already on the paper and move it around and change my ideas than it is to have a blank sheet. And so, you know, if anybody wants to try the thousand words a day, don't try to do a thousand good words a day, just a thousand words. Just a thousand of anything, throw it out there and see what sticks. Right. <laughs> oh, that's great. But um, you mentioned uh, getting it on paper. Do you uh, handwrite? your all of your words or are you using uh what computer i don't know uh, are you dictating what how do you do it i i uh i write in word i've i do some outlining in uh, scrivener that helps me with uh scenes in the book uh and sometimes i'll do a little writing in there they've got kind of a cork board feature where i can work on plotting uh but okay. then once i get going i uh, i write in in word and i okay. just uh when i finish you know i save it and then i'll save it on my hard drive i'll save it to uh, google drive and then every two weeks or so i'll send an email with the document to myself just so i don't lose anything wow 
That's double and triple backup. So very smart. Good for you. <laughs> that good. So if that works for you, and it sounds like quite the process, what advice would you have for uh, people getting started in writing? Well, uh, the habits and, and routines uh, that I've already talked about would be one thing. Uh, the second thing would be to read about writing. I still uh, read a lot of books on writing. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, that's the name of the the famous Stephen King book uh, that that I like so much. I've read that two or three times. But okay. uh, write, uh, read books uh, about how to write. I find those to be uh, very important. Probably the most important uh, thing that uh, influenced my writing after I got going was joining the group that you're the president of, the Central Colorado Writers. Uh, and, and you, by the way, are the vice president. So thank you for that volunteerism. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, critique group within the Colorado Central Writers was fundamental to uh, changing my writing, holding me accountable, getting other eyes on uh, on my work. And it literally changed my, my writing style. Oh. And I, I think it uh, exponentially improved my writing. If I was to boil, you know, the one piece of advice to writers starting out is don't make the mistake of trying to do it alone. Uh, and I did that for the first eight months where I was writing. Um, for one, you'll either convince yourself that you're not writing anything good, or two, you'll convince yourself that you're writing the world's next masterpiece and you might, you might not be. The, the most important thing you can do is find a supportive group of other writers that are supportive and that they want you there with them, but they're honest and that they will tell you what you're doing right, wrong, and where you need to improve. That, for me, uh, the writing community was the number one thing I didn't know about and now can't imagine doing writing without. Yeah, and I might just put in a little bit of a plug for this organization. It's uh, cciwriters.org and uh, read all about it. And Cam and I are both uh, big supporters of uh, the fraternity of authors, writers, and those who just want to fool around and put their toe in the water and see what happens. You don't have to be a pro to join up with the group or uh, get involved in the um, uh, the extra things that the uh, the organization really brings to support anyone in the U.S. It doesn't or in the world. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to live here in the Arkansas Valley. So, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> that's that's well, the end of the advertisement. <laughs> well, I just throw one. I was so glad you brought that up because uh, the the group. You don't have to need to want to write a book. You know, maybe you just want to write down some stuff for your kids yeah. and your grandkids to read about your life. Or maybe you just want to write short stories. Or maybe you just want to be creative a couple times a month. So the advertisement wasn't over. I just I just wanted to pile on to what you were saying. <laughs> you don't have to be trying to write the next novel for it. Well, I think our listeners probably get the drift. Um, <laughs> uh, join CC Writers today. <laughs> That's the byline on it. Well, um, what do you think going forward? You've got uh, a book in August. You've got the prequel next year. In five years, where do you want to be with all this? Have you projected all of that? Well, it depends if you're asking me or if you're asking the Torrance family. When my wife found out how much time I was going to spend each day on this writing effort, uh, she asked me the question, "What? how long are you planning on doing this and uh i think i i was trying to placate her and i said well how about uh 10 books in 10 years and then uh move on to something else and she goes mm -hmm. oh okay so five she years from now, <laughs> five years from now i want to be working on uh on book 10 and hopefully have convinced my uh wife that oh i can i can keep going for for a few more yeah. Well, by then, uh, all your kids will be out of school and on their own. So it might be uh, 20 books by 10 the next five years. So good, good, good. All right. Well, I tell you what, I so appreciate you having been here. And 
so much fun always to talk with you, whether we're recording it or not recording it, but uh, always fun. And I appreciate that. I wondered if you had any time, maybe a couple of minutes that you could uh, share something from one of your books or what you're writing, uh, kind of your choice. Uh, well, I, I do have a, a copy of False Summit here. Um, and this was the book. I don't know if it's showing up on the screen or not. Uh, it is not. Sorry, it is okay. not. Uh, so this was the second book in the Tyler Zahn series. And it uh, was the one that has a little more psychological suspense than uh, what uh, Stable, the first book, had. And so I thought I'd just read... Uh, the opening page or two from there. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay. A dull bronze lamp illuminates the varnished motel room desk where I am studying my notes from yesterday's Miranda Wright's lecture. Today's class doesn't start for another two hours. My phone rings and my eyes narrow as I see Christy Lee's name across the screen. It's early in the morning for a Christy call. My gut twists and I hesitate before answering. Why rush to hear bad news? Christy and I are close, but family close, not lover close. Our 20 plus year age difference, multiple missions together with search and rescue or SAR and our mutual love of the outdoors have created a bond between us, almost as close as the bond I forged with my only daughter. Christy, everything okay? Just needed to check in with the infamous Z-Man, or should I say Reserve Deputy Sheriff Tyler Zahn. Her voice sounds glib as if early morning calls are our norm. They're not. They start early at the Jefferson County Law Enforcement Academy, and I'm still working to weave this new routine with parts of my old one. I laugh. You can keep calling me Z-Man. I haven't graduated yet, but your timing's perfect. Class doesn't start for a couple of hours. Is everything all right back there? Last question is a probe and she'll recognize it. But it's a reasonable question at this hour. I'm stuck out here on the front range outside Denver wallowing through the academy while she's back in my adopted hometown of Buena Vista, nestled in the Colorado Rockies on the banks of the Arkansas River. I miss home and I wonder what's bothering Christy enough to call me at this time of day. Everything's great. Christy pauses and I can almost hear the gears turning as she tries to think up things that are great. The snow's melting, so the river's running high, but the tourists haven't figured it out yet, and the town's still quiet. No tourists? Since when does a raft guide think a lack of tourists is a good thing? Christy pauses again. I need to stop with the small talk and let her tell me what's up. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to guide this year. This declaration jars me. Christy Lee's the epitome of the outdoorsy generation flocking like Canada geese to Buena Vista. She guides rafts in the summer, runs a snowplow in the winter so she can afford to live in a location that allows her maximum river and mountain time. When she's pad when she's not paddling, she's climbing or backcountry skiing or raising her hand for a SAR mission. I'll pause there. But that's that's the first couple pages of False Summit. You know. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that, Cam. I love it. And uh, for all of our listeners out there, I hope you check out our author today, Cam Torrens, appreciate you being here at Hello Ernest at the kitchen table. It's been fun, and I think that's it for now. Any parting comment? Oh, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for supporting authors on your podcast and for all the time uh, you put into being a part of the writing community that's been such an important part of my life. Thanks, Gene. Well, well hey, Cam, uh, the feeling is mutual. Certainly appreciate it. Well, for all of our listeners, all we can say is goodbye for now. Thanks for listening to this informal conversation with today's author. Join us next time as we connect writers and readers around the kitchen table. <laughs>